You don't go to an event hoping that you get finals or hoping that you get the finals before the grand finals, right? You, you go to an event and you want to win. We just kind of have to hold our breath and, and hope that we are within that top 16. I remember every aspect of those competitions so vividly. Almost like a cross between a sporting event and a concert. There's 50 other teams there with hundreds of students, all these people competing at the same challenge, different robots doing the task in a completely different manner. It's really cool to see that. The requirements for this year are building a robot that can go around and score these oversized tennis balls into an upper or lower goal. And then there's a climbing aspect at the end where it's kind of like a monkey bar. There's a huge advantage to the teams that are diving into new technology such as 3D printing. It allows us to be super custom and just try out new things on a much faster scale. We're a team that is ambitious and maybe not as afraid to try something new and different. We feel like that we have the ability to kind of make up some ground if we make some miscues along the way, so we're willing to take those high risk, high reward avenues when we feel they're appropriate. The top eight teams generate their own alliances. You build an alliance of three teams and you take that alliance and you compete in an elimination bracket style tournament. It's typically best of three. Some teams are scouting at levels that would make the MLB look crazy. When you see our team is in the stands over there, they have their phone out or they have a tablet out and they're taking notes on a specific team for each match. And then we're making this little database right here, which will show like all their activity in the matches. It's like real world. You're working at a company, you have a goal, you have to bring in other companies to assist you in that goal. And we lucked out because we got our pick balance. We have really good chemistry and we know how to work with them, they know how to work with us, our strategies really mesh well. Yeah. Anyone that I think really is hooked into the FRC world is a competitive person. This is my last year I get to do this as a student. I want to really impress people with my robot. I want to, I want to win. The that has not been able to be solved yet. So the, there's wires that basically connect all of the motors together. One of them got pulled out. And it took us a while to find which wire was pulled out because there's a lot of wiring in there. It, it is a lot of pressure on kids. But I think pressure is what molds people. It results in really great engineering experiences for these students. Well, 
it's out of our control. We just kind of have to hold our breath and, and hope that we are within that top 16. The hard part like about keeping kids engaged is like convincing them that like they can do this and that it's not like an overwhelming challenge for them. If you can bring them through a season, get them to the first competition, they start to kind of understand like all the hard work we did in the shop and like what it's showing up as on the field. If the team does well and you can get to the world championship and they can see it happening on that level, you really understand like what you're plugged into. And then like, now we have them hooked. 